Uh, one day in a religion class, a little boy said to the nun, Sister, I figured out why God the Father created the world with his left hand. The nun said, why, Johnny? And Johnny says, because Jesus was sitting on his right hand. What a great feast day today, the great feast day of the ascension of our Lord Jesus. I like to say that the ascension is the day that we commemorate when Jesus started working from home. But he, did, he works from heaven because he takes the high ground. He looks out over the world and intercedes for us with his heavenly Father, continually praying for the world, interceding for the world. Some of the prayers in today's Mass called Jesus the High Priest. So Jesus is the High Priest. Before he ascended, notice what he did. He gave the disciples a blessing. We just heard from St. Luke's Gospel that he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands and blessed them. And as he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. It's interesting that Luke's Gospel ends with the priestly blessing of Jesus giving this blessing to the apostles because Luke's Gospel starts out with Zechariah in the temple. And Zechariah, who had seen the vision and was told that he would be the father of John the Baptist, he doubted. And because of that, he became deaf and mute. And so when he came out, he could not give the priestly blessing as priest that year. And so the gospel begins with no priestly blessing from Zechariah, but the gospel ends with the priestly blessing of Jesus, the true high priest. And he gives this priestly blessing, and then Jesus ascends to the right hand of the Father, not to abandon us, the prayer says, but to be our hope. So Jesus is always at the right hand of the Father. He's ascended and he continues working from heaven, bestowing mercy upon us and upon the whole world. He always shows the Heavenly Father his five wounds. All the other wounds of Jesus have been healed, all the scourge marks and the beatings and all the torture. But the five wounds of Christ remain in heaven. The wounds in his two hands, wrist, the wounds in his feet, the wound in his side. Those five wounds, as many of the saints have said, are like five shining diamonds that he continues to show the Father. Father, look what I did for the world. Have mercy on the world and upon all the, those in need of God's mercy. Jesus ascended, really was to, his ascension completes the Paschal mystery. It wasn't just his passion, death, and resurrection, but the ascension really plays an important role in the, in the whole Paschal mystery. Because Jesus would say that just to Nicodemus, just as he descended from heaven because the word became flesh and dwelt among us, Jesus is God, the second person of the Trinity. He descended from heaven to be born in, 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 as, a, as man and then to be born as a likeness of a servant, as a slave. But then, just as he humbled himself, so the Father exalted Jesus, and Jesus ascends to the side of the Heavenly Father, where he continues to offer intercession for us. And Jesus spent 40 days, St. Luke tells us, before he ascended. It's very important, there's 40 days. 40 days in the Bible, the word 40, always has to do with giving instruction or preparation for a very special mission. Jesus fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights in the desert before he began his public mission. We know that the chosen people traveled for 40 years to prepare themselves to enter into the promised land. So Jesus spent 40 days with his apostles, instructing them, preparing them, establishing the church, and he told them to go to Jerusalem and pray until you receive power from on high. So he told them to pray, and then for nine days, they made the first novena, praying to the Holy Spirit, who was with them. It was our Blessed Mother, the Apostles and Our Lady, it says, prayed in the upper room. And then on the 10th day, the day of Pentecost, which means the 50th day after Passover, the 50th day after Jesus died and rose, the Holy Spirit came down upon them 
It was the Father and the Son who sent their spirit upon the church. Jesus had told the apostles at the Last Supper, it is better for you that I go, otherwise you would not receive the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? It is the love between the Father and the Son. It is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of our Lord Jesus, who fills the apostles. If Jesus had stayed on earth visibly in one human nature, he could only be one place at one time. But now that Jesus ascended and bestowed his Spirit within us, which we receive at our baptism, Christ can be present in each one of us. His spirit, his divine life, his sanctifying grace, the divine indwelling can be within us. That's why Jesus says, it is better for you that I go. That way he will not just be outside of us, he will be within us to empower us and transform us and make us sharers in his own divine nature, which is sanctifying grace. Every time a baby is baptized, they receive the washing away of original sin, and the indwelling of the Blessed Trinity within their soul. It's an incredible gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit that Jesus gives us through the church. Now, even though Jesus ascended to the Father, he did not abandon us. He remains with us through his church, especially through the seven sacraments, primarily through the Holy Eucharist, his body, blood, soul, and divinity in his resurrected, glorified uh, body is under the appearance of bread and wine. So yes, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, but he's also in every tabernacle of every Catholic church. So he did not abandon us. Yes, he's at the Father's side interceding for the world, but he's also here and becomes present on the altar in every mass. And we receive the risen Lord in Holy Communion every time we go to Mass and receive communion. So Jesus did not abandon us. He left us his church. He left us his word, the sacred scripture, the special presence of the Lord when the, Lord, the word of God is proclaimed. He even says, where two or more are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of you. So Jesus is present in many different ways, through his church, through the word of God, through the community, but primarily he's present physically body, blood, soul, divinity in the Holy Eucharist. So the Lord ascended, but just as in the Old Testament, as Elijah was ascending, his disciple Elisha said, give me a double portion of the spirit. And as Elijah was ascending, he said, when you see me ascend, then I will give you a double portion of the Holy Spirit. And as Elisha saw Elijah go up, Elijah dropped his mantle and it, it clothed Elisha, and he was given a double portion of the Holy Spirit. And that's what happens in Pentecost. Jesus ascends, they see him ascending, and then Jesus sends a double portion of his spirit to clothe the apostles with the Holy Spirit. So right now we're in this period of nine days as we prepare for Pentecost, which is next Sunday. I encourage you every day to pray to the Holy Spirit, make the novena to the Holy Spirit every day between now and Pentecost. Pray with Our Lady and ask for a special grace that you need, the power of the Holy Spirit. We all need the Holy Spirit. For example, at very difficult times in our world, in our country, that we need the Holy Spirit to be our consoler, our, our teacher, our comforter, there's so many tragedies and challenges in the world. We need the Holy Spirit to comfort families that have lost children, to comfort those who have lost loved ones, to pray for peace in Ukraine and throughout the world, to pray for the end of all violence, the end of all terrorism, the end of abortion, the end of anything that takes innocent human life. We need the Holy Spirit to be our comforter and our consoler. We also need the Holy Spirit to be our counselor, our teacher, to enlighten our minds, to help us to know and to live our faith. And the Holy Spirit is called our advocate, our paraclete. The word paraclete means someone who is at our side to defend us, to help us, and to strengthen us. So that's really what this time between the Ascension and Pentecost is all about, praying to the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit will comfort us guide us, enlighten us, and really prepare us for our true home, 
which is heaven. So the reason why Jesus ascended, he says, to go to prepare a place for us. He focuses us and reminds us that heaven is our true home and that where the head of the church is gone, we as the members of the church hope to follow.